Hi guys, next chapter, San Francisco Treat. Cecile didn't care where we went or what we did on Saturdays and Sundays, as long as we stayed far away from her peace and quiet. Our first weekend, we had played go fish and tic-tac-toe in our room and waited for Cecile to announce that we were going to some adventurous place that existed only in California. By the second weekend, I knew we had to have a plan. Since the sun rose high that Saturday, I figured it was a good day to go to the beach and collect seashells for souvenirs. Vanetta, Fern, and I had put our bait on our bathing suits and sunglasses, and I'd asked Cecile to take us to the beach. I had never spoken Martian to someone and had them give me the look that could only be given to a Martian. Instead of answering our questions, Cecile gave us a look that said, who are you and what planet did y'all come from? I ended up taking my sisters to the city pool where we swam and splashed around without thinking about all that chlorine water knotting up our hair. When we came back to her house smelling like chlorine, I'd asked Cecile if I could use a hot comb to press our hair, seeing how naughty it got. I'd expected she'd say no outright because I'd smoke up her precious workplace with hair burning from the hot comb. In fact, I expected a no followed by an I and send you for y'all in the first place. It hadn't occurred to me that Cecile didn't own a hot comb or a curling iron, even though the fact even though that fact was as big and thick as her unpressed braids. She said, Naughty. Your hair ain't naughty. It ain't misbehaving. It's doing what God meant it to do. That would have been big news, been news to Big Ma. We never entered the house of God without her hair pressed and smelling like Dixie Peach hair grease. For our third Saturday in Oakland, I had a better plan. I told my sisters we're going on an excursion. Miss Miriam Webster would have been proud. Excursion. To Vanetta and Fern's uncomprehending faces, I said, we're taking a bus ride to our own adventure. It didn't make sense to fly 3,000 miles to the land of Mickey Mouse, movie stars, and all your sun, and not see anything but Black Panthers, police cars, and poor Black people. I wasn't foolish enough to set out for Hollywood, Disneyland, or the beach where they filled, filmed Happening 68 with rock and rollers like Paul Revere and the Raiders. Instead, I planned that we would spend our nearly last Saturday in California traveling across the bay to San Francisco to ride a cable car and see Chinatown, Fisherman's Wharf, and the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, that was an excursion worthy of a back-to-school essay. Even if we didn't have a camera to take pictures of us on our adventure, we would know we'd been there. I told my sisters, don't say a word, just let me do all the talking. Even though I knew Cecile didn't care, I didn't want her to suddenly take an interest in us and ask a lot of questions. If she asked questions, I'd have to spin a lot of straw. And I couldn't spin a lot of straw and look in the face, look her in the face the way I'd like to. Like I'm 11 going on 12 and I know what I'm doing. Cecile, we need money. I have an all-day activities planned, and I, we have to eat out while we're doing our activities. Yeah, gotta eat. I turned to Fern. Don't say any more, Fern. She got it. If I pour cereal for them before we go, I said, I'll only need change for the bus, some lunch money, and a little extra if you want us gone long. Cecile almost raised an eyebrow, but not quite. She figured we were up to something, but probably didn't want to know the details. She reached into her man's pants and poured a lot of nickels, dimes, and pennies and some quarters into my hand. We needed both hands to get every coin. She dealt out $11 from a wad of bills and gave me those also. I was so giddy about having all that money. I just dumped it in my shoulder bag. I could sort it out later. Just by the weight of the silver and the copper, I knew more that we had more than $15 I had counted on us getting. I ate my cereal and washed the dishes with my shoulder bag, slung around my neck Brooklyn style. The best way to lose your money is to hold your bag off the shoulder. But this way, with the bag slung crosswise, you were ready for anything. As we were walking out the door, excited about our excursion, Cecile called out, I'm not coming down to no police station if you're out there stealing. You all have to spend the night in jail. That was as good as be safe and have a good time as we were going to get from Cecile. We took it and left. Outside, the yards and streets were filled with screaming kids playing. It was all I could do to keep Vanetta and Fern in line for my fully planned excursion. I had worked too hard writing everything down not to have it 
them want to go. I had asked Sister Pat about the bus and the cable car. I had gotten the sightseeing information from the library. I wasn't about to let a kickball game and some Barbie tea parties throw a mile-long pouts on Vanetta and Fern because they wanted to stay here in black, poor Oakland. Then the worst possible thing happened. Hirohito came rambling up to us in his homemade go-kart. He skidded to a stop using his high-top sneakers right at Vanetta's feet. She squealed and laughed and said, what you know, Hirohito? That was some cute thing she and Janice Angton had come up with. I was sick of hearing it. Delphine, want to watch me fly down that hill? No. I said while my sister screamed, yes. I glanced at my Timex. Don't stand there watching Hirohito in his go-kart, it said. It said, the East Bay bus leaves in 12 minutes. You don't have time for that. Vanetta and Fern folded their arms and wouldn't budge. They watched Hirohito do that run and flop into the flying tee and go bumpity bump down the hill. When he neared the end of the hill, he dragged his sneakers like Fred Flintstone and came to a full stop. Then he jumped up and turned to us waving. Vanetta and Fern waved back. Let's see him do it again, Vanetta said. It's a boy going down a hill, I said. We've seen it already. Let's go. I couldn't say it was thrilling how he jumped on that board thing and rolled down the hill, twisting the tee to the left and the right, and then swerving it around. I couldn't say how I admired him for not crying about his father being in prison and for trying to be a normal kid. If you wanted to call Hirohito Woods normal, I certainly didn't want Vanetta to get the wrong idea because and think I was stuck on Hirohito as she and Janice were because I wasn't. He was just a boy, and I didn't want to miss a bus to our adventure. Our bus pushed out of poor and black Oakland where lines formed for free breakfast and men stood around because there were no jobs and too much liquor. We were glad to be going. Each of us looked out and off on into different directions, taking in all that we could. Finally, we were on our way to an adventure. I watched Fern glued to the bus window and saying to herself, I wonder if she missed Miss Patty Cake at all. How she loved, loved, loved Miss Patty Cake for long before she could walk. She teethed on Miss Patty Cake's arms and legs, ate her hair when she didn't know better, squeezed her, slept with her, fed her, and sang to her. Seven years of loving Miss Patty Cake, and now not one mention of her. I can study every move Fern makes and still not completely know her. There are things, just things I don't understand about the, her the way I understand Vanetta. After Miss Patty Cake had been damaged and put away, I slept lightly, expecting Fern to awaken during the night, missing her true love. Not that I wanted Fern to be heartbroken. I didn't want her to love someone all her life and then not lo love or want them at all. Even if her someone was a doll, that was no way to be. I wanted to say something to Fern, but then she cupped her hand around her mouth <gasps> and squealed, ooh, like she'd seen something bad, like a naked lady running down the street. It was that kind of an ooh squeal. What, Fern? Her eyes stayed big, her hand over her mouth. Vanetta and I kept going, what, Fern, what? She swallowed a gulp of air and uncupped her mouth. I saw something. She said it again and had gone from a gog to being pleased with herself. I saw something. She clapped to the beat. No matter how much we asked, Fern shook her head no, clapped her hands and sang her song. I saw something. Fern was pleased she had seen something. Vanetta was sure she hadn't seen a thing, and I remembered he had said Delphine. He had said Delphine. Delphine, want to watch me fly down that hill? She's got a crush, and Fern saw something.